Hello, and welcome to EGR 219, Computational Modeling of Engineering Systems. My name is Lynn, and I am the teaching assistant for your instructor, Dr. Sangram Redcar. Um, hopefully you have picked up a copy of your book, An Engineer's Guide to MATLAB. If not, go ahead and make sure that you get a copy. This is going to be critical to your success in the course. Um, I'm pretty much going to record these lectures to coincide with each chapter of the book. So we'll have pretty much one video per chapter. Um, to help you prepare for these video lectures, I would recommend going through each of the chapters beforehand and reading that chapter so that you are familiar with the concepts that will be discussed in the video. Um, that way, when, when you go to watch these lectures, um, you will be able to focus more on the, the topics that you need clarification on. Um, with that being said, I'm going to do my best to go ahead and cover all the material from each of the chapters. Um, but just be aware that there are a lot of additional examples and some um, details that you may find useful to help you learn MATLAB that may not be covered specifically in these videos. So in other words, just be sure to use these as um, supplements to your reading materials and you should do just fine in the course. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start with chapter one from our text. And this is going to be an introductory chapter. It will introduce us to MATLAB. Um, you can see the outline here. And so we have an introduction, the uh, MATLAB environment. So we're going to start using the graphical user interface. We're going to talk about some options for accessing help if you're ever stuck. And there's also the symbolic toolbox. And then at the end of the chapter is a summary of the functions from chapter one. So what is MATLAB? It's a computing language that's devoted to the processing of data in the form of arrays called matrices. It integrates computation and visualization into a flexible computer environment and provides a diverse family of built-in functions that can be used to solve all kinds of in different engineering problems. It derives its name, MATLAB, from Matrix Laboratory. So as far as the introduction goes, we're going to introduce you to some kind of key terms here in regards to the MATLAB environment. First, we have the workspace, which displays a list of the variables that the user has currently defined, as well as the variables properties. There's also the command window. Um, the inside of that is a command prompt, and it displays anything that you type into the command prompt as well as any outputs. We also have a command history window. This displays all entries that you have entered into the command window during each session. So when we're taking a look here, this when you first open MATLAB, this is going to be the interface that you will see. There is the command window in the center there, your workspace on the, the top right, again, that's what stores your, your variables that you assign, and then your command history. So all of the commands that you enter into your command window will show up out there. Um, on the left, there is also a current folders directory. As you can see, I in my MATLAB, I personally have folders that I have created in there. That's great for keeping your files organized so that you can quickly reference them later. We'll get into detail about how to um, save and create files that you'll be able to reference at a later point in time. So before we move on to that, let's go ahead and take a look at our actual MATLAB interface here. So again, when we pull up MATLAB, we have our command window, we have our workspace, and then we have our command history over here. Um, here is your command prompt. The little double arrow here signifies the command prompt. So when you click there, you can see that your cursor now has the little cursor icon. Um, down here in the command history, you can see that it is um, date and time stamped. So again, it's going to store your command history according to these individual sessions of when you are logged on to MATLAB. 
So in terms of command window management, there's a couple of tools that are gonna be helpful for you when you're using MATLAB that will help to improve readability and clarification when, when you're using the program and executing code. So the first of these is CLC. And when you type that command next to the prompt, that's going to clear um, all information that is currently displayed in the command window. You can also use clear all or more simply, you can just use clear, either one will work. This removes all the variables from the workspace. So it's not gonna clear your command window, just the variables that are stored in that workspace. You also have close all, which closes or deletes all graphics that are currently displayed in, in a, in a pop-up window. We also have formatting options. We can use format followed by some specific syntax, and I'll show you that in a minute, that can be used to display the numerical outputs to the command window. Um, and there's just an example there. Format compact removes empty or blank lines um, with anything that's displayed to the command window. So we can go ahead and show you, we can go ahead and show you here um, how that is used. So let's say that I have typed an expression in here. We'll just do x equals 5 and then you know y equals 2 and then I can do z equals x plus y. And that's going to output for me that, uh, that z is equal to 7. Now what I want you to see here is that over here in the workspace, we now have variables that have been stored here. So my x, my y, and my z. I can also see what the value of those variables are. Um, additionally, I can double click on any of the variables and it will show additional properties to me. Down here in the command history, you can also see now that um, the commands that I have entered at the prompt are now listed here. Something that's really handy is if you hit your up or down arrow when you're clicked next to the prompt, um, you can scroll through your command history for that session. So you can see here it's scrolling back through the commands that I have typed. So that's going to be really useful when you go to, especially when you go to enter lengthy expressions, if you maybe make a typo or if you need to reuse that expression, just know that you can use those up or down arrows to scroll through your, your command history. So again, if we want to clear our command window, I can hit CLC. And that's now brought my cursor back to the top of the command window and cleared that command window. I can also do clear or clear all. And now we see that the variables in the workspace here are no longer defined. They've been removed from my workspace. Okay, so now on to the formatting options. I mentioned before that we do have the ability to format outputs and results to the command window. There's really easy ways to do that. We use the format function followed by any of these syntax um, options here. So example, the default format in MATLAB, if I wanted to format something to display with four decimal points, that's referred to as format short. I can also do format long, which displays 15 decimal points. We have short E, long E, short engineering, long engineering, rational, if we wanted to exp um, express a, an output as a rational fraction instead of a decimal. We can do hex, we can do bank notation, which uses the double decimal, um, the two places following the decimal point. So let's show that in MATLAB so you can see that in use. So let's say again, I have x equals, we'll just do square root of three. So you can see here that the default format for MATLAB used the four decimal points here. So that's the format short notation. I can also do format long and so now when I execute X, you can see now that there are many more decimal points displayed, or many more um, numbers displayed after the decimal point. Um, we can also do format rational or just format rash. That will also do the same thing. And so now that's displayed it in a rational format for me. So um, if you wanna kinda go through the table, you can play around with the different options in terms of formatting your numerical outputs. 
So, uh, up to this point, you've seen a couple examples now where I have created examples in um, of uh, variables in MATLAB. Um, but I do want you to be aware that there are some limitations in terms of creating variable names. So first, you are limited to a maximum of 63 alphanumeric characters. Uh, additionally, it must start with an uppercase or lowercase alpha letter, um, but after that it can be followed by any combination of uppercase, lowercase letters, numbers, or additionally you can use the underscore symbol. Um, additionally, MATLAB is case sensitive, so you can see here voltage with a lowercase v is different from voltage with an uppercase v. Though it's the same word, MATLAB does distinguish those as two different variables if you were to use both um, within the same program or the same script of code. Um, there is a trade-off in terms of variable names. Um, when, so you can do something that's easily recognizable, such as you know, x equals 5 plus 2z. The problem is with that is that people, when they're reading your code, they may not necessarily know, well, what, is, what does that expression represent? So again, it might be shorter computation, it's easily identifiable, but it may not, or it's easily readable, readable but it may not be easily identifiable. So just realize there is a trade-off there. So here's a couple of examples for you of variable names. They, we've done examples that are permitted and examples that are not permitted. So we can do exit pressure. We can use the underscore symbol here. We can do exit pressure using a combination of uppercase and lowercase letters, or you can do all uppercase, you can do all lowercase. You know, it's just kind of your personal preference, um, you know, in terms of readability. Now, what is not permitted is you cannot put a space in between variable names. So you cannot do exit space pressure. You cannot do exit dot pressure or exit hyphen pressure. And I'll show you now, if we did try to do that in MATLAB, it will give us an error. So let's say that I did exit dot pressure equals 32. Oh, sorry. There we go. So we can see here that when I tried to do the um, oh, timeout, I don't know why this is actually working now. Normally it doesn't. Interesting. I wonder if they changed something. Okay, so sorry, you're gonna have to go back and cut that part out. I don't know why all of a sudden MATLAB allows it. I guess that's cool though. Okay. So let's try that again. Okay, so let's say that we do exit hyphen pressure equals 32. MATLAB will give us an error because it does not permit the use of the hyphen here. Um, so just, just be aware of that. Also, if you try to do exit space pressure, see how it turns that purple? So that's trying to do a different sort of computation with MATLAB. So just be sure to keep that in mind when you're creating variable names. All right, so in addition to assigning actual variable names, we can also use the output of answer or this ANS that's automatically generated by MATLAB if you don't assign an expression or a value as um, with a variable name. So for example, we could just type into the command prompt cos of pi over three, and it would display this answer equals 0.5. We can then go through and use answer to do additional computations. So MATLAB kind of recognizes this as a variable, um, so just know that you can still use that to perform additional computations. Um, additional limitations in terms of creating variable names, there are some keywords that are reserved exclusively for MATLAB, and we've provided a list here for you so that you know what these are. 
Um, we'll get into how to use each of these keywords individually and what they do, but in the meantime, just be aware that these cannot be used as, as variable names. If you were trying to use a, a variable as, as a, that's a keyword, it'll turn a bright blue color, and so you'll know that, you, that you're not able to use that. Um, we do have the ability to control outputs to the command window, and we can do that by suppressing the system response using semicolon notation. So you can see here how we've assigned P, X, and K, and we've just, you know, we use the semicolon here. And so when you execute this, nothing will be displayed to the command window. However, if we didn't use the semicolon, and if instead, say, we used commas as separators just to put all of our, our variables in one line, then it would display, when you execute the code, it would display individually what each of the assignments are for the variables that we defined. So I'll go ahead and show you an example of that. So let's say that we have um, sorry, one second here. I'm just going to copy it to make life easier. Okay, so let's say that I have defined k as being negative 1.7. So you can see when I execute, when I hit enter, it does not um, display any sort of system response registering that k is equal to one, negative 1 1.7. It suppresses that output. However, if I remove that semicolon and I hit enter, you can see that it now displays that output for me. And I'm gonna go back to um, format short here. So, so yeah, you can see that when I execute this, again, it has um, specifically registered back what k is equal to. So that's particularly useful when you are executing scripts. There's going to be times where you, know, you may have 100 lines of code, and you don't necessarily want all of that to display to the command window when a professor or a client or your boss goes to execute your code. So you can use this semicolon to suppress all of the lines of code that you don't want to dis um, that you don't want to display and so you have the ability to control specifically um, the results that you want to show in the command window when we execute expressions in MATLAB using mathematical operators it works very similar to sorry it works very similar to the PEMDAS um, hierarchy that we're all used to. So it goes parentheses, exponentiation, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. The only difference you'll notice here is this prime notation, and that's the apostrophe, and that's used for transpose, um, transposing matrices and vectors, and we'll get into that in chapter two, so don't worry about that too much for now, but just be aware that that is one difference between the MATLAB operations hierarchy and the traditional PEMDAS that we're used to. This table here is directly from your text and it shows you a few examples of how you would use the operators in MATLAB to write out different expressions. So the, sec so the second one here, if we wanted to type uh, multiply d times c to the x plus 2, this would be the notation that we would use or additionally, you could type it this way. Um, so you see there's the multiplication, there's exponentiation, addition, and we also have division, and there's probably a subtraction in there. Um, but they're all the typical operators that we're used to seeing. So um, maybe go through and, and practice a, a few of these just to get used to typing out expressions in MATLAB. So there are some exceptions to MATLAB syntax. Um, MATLAB considers all variables to be arrays of numbers. And so even if we have just a scalar, for example, that's considered a one by one array, meaning that it has one row and one column. 
Um, so just be aware that MATLAB does consider all arrays as variables of numbers. When you're using the arithmetic, arithmetic operators in MATLAB, just know that we do have to obey the rules of linear algebra. Um, when it's just scalar quantities, the usual rules apply, but when it's arrays of numbers, then we would have to use something called dot operations. We're going to go to that, into that more in chapter two in detail, um, but just be aware that there are some limitations when using the operators. Um, sometimes you will see errors that say, you know, matrix dimensions don't agree or something like that, and that's referring to this dot operations. Again, don't worry about that too much for now. We're, we're definitely going to be going into that in the next chapter. So just to show you, um, this here is the syntax that you would use for dot operations. So this is for multiplication, this is for division, this is for exponentiation. Again, this shows you the error that you might receive if you were trying to perform any of these, addition and subtraction is fine, but if you're doing multiplication, division, exponentiation on arrays of numbers, then you might receive this error if you don't use the dot operations. So you can see here, I don't have a dot in front of the multiplication sign, I received the error. Here I did put it and it was able to compute the answer for me. This table here uh, provides an additional list of some useful functions that you might use throughout this course. For example, if we wanted to type e to the x, we would use this function here or this command. We also can do square root, which you saw me use earlier. That's this syntax. We can do logs. We can do absolute values. Um, we can do signums. We can do factorials. We can do all primes. So these will definitely be useful to you. Chapter one provides a lot of tables that, that give you some useful syntax. So just be sure to go through and, and really look through those so that you can start to familiarize yourself with some of the, uh, the commands that are available to you. So in, um, you'll also be able to see we have a table 1.5 from the text that has um, built-in trigonometric and hyperbolic functions. This is also really useful. The, the syntax is the, use, the usual convention that we're used to when, when using trig or hyperbolic functions. The only thing to particularly note here is that there are different notations depending on whether our, your input arguments are in radians or in degrees. So you can see here, when we're working in radians, the syntax is simply sine x or cos x. But if we're working in degrees, then we need to do sine d for degrees of x. Um, so just be aware of that, that sometimes things, uh, something that trips students up, so just be sure that you go through and double check. You know, if you're using trig and your answers seem to be off, maybe go through and make sure that you're using the right um, notation depending on what your input argument is. So here's an expression that, that we can go ahead and try using the trigonometric functions. So let's say that we have x is equal to 0.1, a is equal to 0.5, and y is equal to this expression here. I'd recommend let's go ahead and type this into MATLAB. And so what, when you do that, you will receive this output of y is equal to 1.0736. Now, one thing that's important to know here is you see how x and a are used within this expression for y. Before you can execute y, you will need to define what x and a are. When MATLAB goes through and executes code, it starts at the top and works its way through to the bottom. So if you define y and then a and x, you will receive an error that says that x and a are undefined functions or variables. So just be aware that you do need to define variables before you use them within an expression. Table 1.6 provides some additional syntax and notation for you that may be useful. For example, we don't have to type out 3.14159 every time we want to use pi. We can simply type the word pi and MATLAB knows that that's this numerical value. Similarly, for the square root of negative one, we can use i or j. 
Uh, for infinity, we have INF notation, and then here's a couple of others. We can do real max, real min. Um, you know, again, these tables explain for you and provide examples exactly what they do. Um, I would recommend maybe going through and trying a few of them just to get used to the syntax. Another table we have that's useful is from 1.7, and you, what this is showing is our rational operators. Most of these are the typical convention that we're used to, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. The two to be particularly noted here is the equals and the not equals. You've seen we've used the equal sign when we're doing variable assignments, but there will be times when you do have to use the double equal symbol when you're doing, um, when you're using these rational operators. So for example, if we wanted to create a forever while loop in MATLAB, we would have to do while, um, you know, like i equals equals one. So just be aware that you will need to use that notation. And then also if we wanted to do not equal to, we use the tilde symbol and then the equal sign. Additional syntax that is helpful in terms of um, decimal to integer conversion. We do have the ability to um, round our outputs. So for example, with fix, that's going to round towards zero. So 2.7 is going to round down towards two. We can do round, which is the standard, you know, rounding either up or down, depending on the value. So 2.7 rounds up to three, negative 1.9 rounds to negative two. Um, we also can do seal or ceiling x that rounds towards infinity and then we also have floor x which rounds towards minus infinity. Additionally, we do have the ability to manipulate complex numbers in MATLAB. This is something that's really convenient, especially for circuits courses where you're going to be dealing with these types of computations. Um, so for example, we can do the complex conjugate of, of an expression. So if we have like three plus four J, we can use this notation here, the conj Z, and that will take the, the complex conjugate for us. Additionally, we can extract the real part of the expression, we can extract the imaginary part of the expression, um, we can compute phase angles, we can do absolute value. So um, again, these are something that'll definitely be useful, so take a look at those. There's also statistical functions that are built into MATLAB. Um, these will definitely be handy in terms of dealing with matrices and arrays. So for example, we can find the max value in an array. We can find the mean, median, mode. Um, we can find the minimum. We can find the standard deviation and the variance. Um, you know, if you've taken a statistics course, this might have been useful. If not, it'd be good for you to learn this. Um, that way when you go to take the course, you'll know how to do it in MATLAB and that'll be very useful for you. So we've seen uh, a couple of these, these special characters already. And so, for example, the period or the dot can be used as a decimal point or as I explained, it can also be used as part of dot operations. We have the comma, which is used as a separator, um, depending upon your specific application that you're using it for. We have the semicolon, which is used to suppress displays of results to the command window. I showed you that. Um, it also indicates a new row when we're creating matrices. We're gonna show you that more in chapter two. And then we have the colon notation, which we will additionally show in um, chapter two as well but it can, um, it's used as a separator for vector creation um, to create vector expressions. So now that we've kind of gone through the some general syntax, there will be cases where you will want to create permanent records of your code. You're gonna wanna create script files that you can save and reference at a later point so that you can share them, you can upload them for your assignments or, or whatever the case may be. So um, here's some different reasons why you might create scripts. You know, if, if you need to do debugging, that would be another reason that you would create a script. So I'm gonna go into MATLAB here and I'm going to show you how we do that. So there's this button here at the top left that says new script. And if you click on that, 
it will bring up a new window for you, an untitled window. This here is the MATLAB editor. And so you can type in here and then we can save this and it will save it over here into your current folder directory. So again, we can reference this code at a later point in time. Okay, so I showed you just click on that little new script button in the top left and it will bring up this, this window here, your script window. So when we are using scripts, we have the ability to create sections. This is particularly helpful. Let's say that you want to include different types of problems into one script file. So for example, if you're doing your homework and you have four different homework problems, it would be really useful to create scripts within it so that you don't have to create a separate file for each problem. We do that with this syntax here. So it's the double percent sign and then followed by a space that's really important and then you can write whatever text here typically students choose to write the specific problem number that they're solving for and then after that you can enter your code so you see here how when this cell is highlighted it, it turns to kind of a yellow color when you create a second section it will put this little thin gray line between each of the sections so let's go ahead and show that in MATLAB. So let's say we go percent percent problem one. So now we can see that that has been highlighted. So I have created a section. So let's go x equals five, y equals two, z equals x plus y. Okay, so that's my first problem. And then I can have problem to, I typed something wrong here, there we go. So um, then we can do problem two, we can do problem three, but you see here how this has created separate sections and now I can click on each of these and it will highlight according to which section that I am specifically clicked on. So that, just be aware that that's useful. Now, um, another thing that students get confused on is creating comments versus creating sections. So I just showed you we use the um, double percent sign to create a comment or, or to create a section. To create a comment, you use a single percent sign. And so you can say here is my comment. So both are going to be highlighted in green but just be aware that you do have to use the double percent symbol followed by a space sign in order to create, um, in order to create sections. All right, back to our presentation here. There is, we, we talked about the clear all, the CLC, the close all. It is generally good practice to begin your scripts with these three particular lines of code. It reduces the chance of errors. Um, sometimes you'll have, you'll have applications where, you know, you have three different problems and each of the problems you may have defined X, but each of those X's has a different value. And so um, if you do this clear all, CLC, close all, we'll close any graphs that, that are opened. Um, um, then that helps to reduce the chance of MATLAB getting mixed up and causing errors. So just be aware of that. Again, that's just good practice, not something that you're required to do by any means, but it just it is good industry practice. So um, more about the script, we have inputs, initialization, computation, and output. So input includes numerous checks to ensure that all input variables have the qualities required for the script function to work properly. So for example, this is what I was talking about earlier, where if we define an expression, but we didn't assign variables that we use in that expression first, then this input process is gonna go through and make sure that we have the appropriate variables there. Um, initialization, again, is just assigning your variables to their numerical values. Computation is where MATLAB goes through and actually evaluates the expression. And then the output, that's what's going to be displayed to the command window or to the graphical outputs. 
All right, so when we create files, before we can actually execute them, we do have to save them. And when you save these files, they're referred to, the scripts are referred to as M files in MATLAB or .m files. Um, .m is the extension that MATLAB uses on its files. So um, just know that there are some limitations in terms of file names. This is something that also causes some troubles for students, so be sure that you're aware of what these limitations are. Um, you are limited to a maximum of 62 alphanumeric characters, just like with variables, it has to start with an uppercase or lowercase alpha letter. And then after that, it can be followed by any combination, uppercase, lowercase letters, numbers, underscore character. Um, no other special characters are permitted, um, particularly the space. You cannot have a space in your file name. So for that reason, for this particular course, we do ask that you use the following naming conventions for your assignments. So use your first name, your last name, and then followed by the homework number. Um, same with pre-quizzes, post-quizzes, or whatever assignment it is you're working on. Um, this just helps to reduce the chance of, of file naming errors. All right, so now let's go ahead and show you how to actually save a script in MATLAB. So we click on the Save button under your Editor tab here and Save As. And I'm just going to call this Example Code. Perfect. So now we see that it has listed this file in my current folders directory. And again, note the .m extension here. When you go to upload your assignments, we will specify that you have to upload .m files. Um, there are other types of files. You know, MATLAB can be saved as .doc files. It can be saved as .asv files. Um, so just be aware of that and make sure that you are uploading the correct file um, for your assignments. So now that we have this saved, we are able to run our and execute our code. And we can do that a couple of different ways. We have the run button, which is located under our editor tab here. So run will execute an entire script. So when I have problem one, problem two, these are all separate sections, it'll run all of the sections within the script. Um, I also have the ability to just run that one section. So if I wanted to run problem one, for example, I would just highlight that cell and then click run section, and it would only the display the output for that particular section. Um, I can also do run and advance, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna execute this, the section that, I'm, that, I'm, that I've selected, and then it's going to advance to the next section. It will evaluate and produce an output for the selected cell, but it will not evaluate the next one. It'll just advance to the next one. So I'll show you that real quick. So let's say we'll just do t equals square root of three, and that should demonstrate it. Okay, so if I just want to run this particular section, I can do run section. And so you see here, it's displayed the output. I didn't suppress the Y, I didn't suppress the Z, so I can see both of those outputs in my command window here. Again, I can also do run in advance. So you can see it executed the problem one again, but it has not displayed an output for problem two. It just advanced to the next one. I can also, let's just put this Y equals three plus five. I can also run the entire script using this run button here. And so when I do that, it has executed all three of the problems that are contained within my script. And you can see those here. Um, another thing that might be helpful too, sometimes you may need to do this to scroll back or make things a little more readable. You can grab these um, bars here and you can slide them so that you can view more of the window. Same goes with these over here. You can extend these if need be. All right, so accessing help features. This is something that's gonna be really useful. I use it all the time. And um, there's a couple of different ways that you can access help. There's online help, and then there's also help features that are built directly into MATLAB. To access the online help, you're gonna click on this little help icon right here. 
And what that's gonna do is it's gonna bring up an additional window. And you can either search the documentation by just typing in whatever it is that you're looking for, or you can click on any of these links here. Typically for our course, you may just click on the MATLAB link um, and that will take you to some additional resources. Um, this is particularly handy if you don't know the specific function that you're looking for or the specific syntax that you're looking for. Um, this will take you to um, the MATLAB website, which provides a lot of examples and you can search around in there to find additional information that you may need. So I'll show you that in MATLAB here. So again, I can go to the Home tab and I can click on Help. And that will bring up this additional window here. I can click on MATLAB and then you can see it's brought me to their website and then I can access all kinds of additional information just depending on what it is that I am looking for. In addition to online features, I can also access help directly within MATLAB. And the way you do that is you type help space and then the name of your function. So again, this is particularly useful if you know the particular syntax that you need to use, but maybe you just don't know what the parameters are or what input arguments it, it accepts. Um, so again, this is directly with, executed within the command window. So for example, if you needed help understanding how to um, you know, lo locate more information about eigenvalues using the MATLAB window, you can do that. Help eigen, and see how it turns purple, that's how I know that it's a, it's a, a function that's actually searchable. And so you see here, it provides all kinds of additional information for me. It gives examples, it provides syntax, and uh, you know, just further explanation. Um, that's really, really useful. Um, additionally, you can click on this little F of X button right here. A lot of people don't know that that's actually a button, but you can click on that and then this also accesses different resources. So you can find out, you know, entering commands, um, it shows you the CLC format, things like that. So just be aware that you can use that too. All right, the symbolic toolbox. This is something that's really, really important and really handy um, when you're gonna be using this to solve all kinds of different engineering problems. But basically what it does is it allows us to uh, manipulate symbols to perform algebraic um, matrix and calculus operations. So when you couple the results obtained from symbolic operations with MATLAB's ability to create functions, you have a very effective means of numerically evaluating symbolically obtained expressions. This is gonna be talked about more in chapter five, so, but this will just be a good introduction for you. So we're gonna go through a few different examples of using this particular symbolic toolbox in MATLAB. We're gonna do some precision arithmetic, differentiation and integration, limits, Taylor series, substitution, inverse Laplace transform. Just be aware that you can use the symbolic toolbox to do that. However, we're not going to cover it in this course. So here is the general syntax that we use to create symbolic variables in MATLAB. You use sims, and then A space B space C, or you can just do Sims A, it just depends on what you're using. We just did this here to show that you can have multiple symbolic variables assigned at one time here. The important thing is to know that you do have to have blank spaces between each of your symbolic variables that you're defining. Um, additionally, we can restrict the um, symbolic variables to only being real variables. In that particular case, just add this real syntax here. The symbols can be intermixed, or, sorry, intermixed with non-symbolic variable names, numbers, MATLAB functions, um, but all of the results will be symbolic objects or expressions. So here's an example here. Let's say that we have this expression here for f. We're assuming that D equals 4.2, but we don't have A and B. So we're going to symbolically define A and B. 
then we're going to assign variable d as 4.2, and then our expression here, which we've typed out. So when we execute it, we can see that we still have a and b in our expression, um, though this is now a symbolic object. So again, we didn't have to define specific numbers for a and b. Um, this sims allowed us to just do the computation symbolically. Uh, for differentiation, MATLAB makes it really easy to perform differentiation. Um, just This is the syntax that you're going to use, diff f x n. And so f is going to be your function, x is the variable with which your differentiation is being performed, and then n is the number of differentiations to be performed. So we'll look at an example here. Let's say that we want to take the derivative of this function, b cos of bt, first with respect to t, then with respect to b. To do that, we would use the following script, sims of b space t. So we evaluate our first one here, dt equals this expression. So again, we have our function, we have the variable that we are taking our differentiation within, uh, with respect to, and then how many times we want to differentiate. Similar, we're doing the same thing with b here. So then when we execute it, we can see that it has performed the differentiation for dt and for db. Similarly, we can do the same thing with integration. Um, the syntax is just a little bit different. We use int, and then we have f, x, c, and d. So f is, again, our, our function, our symbolic expression. x is the variable of integration. And then c is our lower limit of integration. d is our upper limit of integration. Um, just be aware that if you omit c and d, using this application, it will result in the indefinite integral of f of x. So similarly, how, um, similarly to how we did before, that should say take the integral, sorry, of b cos of bt, first with t, respect to t, then with respect to b. So again, we have our function here. In this case, we're taking um, the integral with respect to t, here with respect to b, and then here is our limits of integration. So when we execute, we can see that we will receive the following symbolic expressions or symbolic objects as a result. Additionally, we can do limits in MATLAB. Um, again, it makes it really easy for us. So um, a limit is the value that a function or sequence approaches as the input or index approaches some value. So our syntax that we're going to use here is the limit of f, x, z. So f is going to be your symbolic expression, or sorry, your symbolic function x is your symbolic variable that is assumed to be the limiting value z. So let's look at an example here. So when we're um, evaluating this function here, when we're taking the limit, we can see here that it's approaching a value of 2. If we were to do hand computations, we could see that, but let's try it in MATLAB. So let's use this, um, this particular syntax here. Go ahead and try this. So lin space, what this does is it's creating equally spaced values for us. And I'll, I'll show you in a minute what, what that looks like. So here's our expression. Again, we have to use the dot operations because we have this array here, okay? So we're doing sims x, that's our symbolic variable. And then we're doing our limit. So our limit of our function um, x and then our, I'll show you, go back here. So we were doing the limit as x approaches one. And when we execute it, we can see that the answer is 2. Um, here's another example for you. Uh, this time we're using um, sims to define two symbolic variables, a and b, using this expression here, the limit as a approaches infinity. So again, we can see this is our function. This here 
is our limiting variable. And then um, as it approaches infinity, when we execute, we can see that the limit is equal to two thirds. So again, this is really handy because it reduces the amount of computations that you have to do by hand. Here's another example using limits. This time it's the limit as x approaches infinity of this function. Um, our symbolic variables are y and x. Here's our function, here's our variable, and as it approaches infinity, when we execute, we can see that the output is this expy, which we saw this earlier from one of our tables. That's the same thing as e to the y. So um, one final example of using the symbolic toolbox, uh, we can perform sailor, or <laughs> Taylor series expansions using the symbolic toolbox. So a Taylor series expansion is simply the expansion of a function f of x about a given point, say for, for example a. So the general syntax that we're gonna use is Taylor f n a x. And so let's look at an example here. So let's say that we want to obtain a four term expansion of cos theta about point theta naught. To do this, we would use the symbolic toolbox. Our two symbolic variables are x and theta naught. Um, and in this case, it's just tho. So then here's our, our Taylor syntax. So here's our function. Here's our variable. Here's our second variable. This order here, this is a parameter that you'll enter whenever you're going to do more than one a one-term expansion. So in this case, since we're doing a four-term expansion, we need to use order here. These little um, single quotation marks are required, and when you do this in MATLAB, you'll see that it turns a purple color. So when you execute this, this is the expression that you will receive. And so again, that's a symbolic function, a symbolic object, symbolic expression, that all means the same thing, um, which so that you can actually see what that looks like in math type. This is your answer here for the Taylor series expansion. So we also can do substitution for MATLAB, uh, with MATLAB, so we can do subs FAB. So just look at this example here. It'll show you exactly how, how we do that. So we have sims, x, and z. So let's say that we wanted to um, substitute z in for x here. We would do subs, f, x, z. So when we execute, we can see that the answer is now sine of z, where z has replaced our x value there. So that pretty much summarizes chapter one. Um, hopefully that provides you with at least a little more clarification when you go through and read the text. There are a bunch of example problems provided at the end of this, these PowerPoint slides, as you can see. I do recommend going through each of these and working through them. Um, you know, try them on your own first, and then if you get stuck, come back and look at these PowerPoints. But these are just really good introductions to using the basic MATLAB syntax. For example, using square roots, using the trig, um, you know, use doing Taylor series, using your factorial, things like that. So um, go ahead and give them a try. Like I said, if you get stuck, um, you can either email me or, or take a look at these slides here. And um, either way, we'll, we'll be sure to get you more clarification on any concepts that, that you need additional information on. Just feel free to let me know. Um, but that concludes today. And if you have any other questions, like I said, just let me know. Thanks. Bye.